Okay, that is absolutely positively not true. He's just regurgitating. This. It doesn't happen, bro. You are not going to shut down your pituitary's production of growth hormone. The medical establishment does not want people using human growth hormone. And there is never a disturbance in IGF when you keep your dosage within a relatively, call it surgically precise dosage range. It's, he says some stuff in here about growth hormone. It's definitely true. But I want to like sort out the, like what I would call disinformation or um, obfuscation. Keep in mind that Growth hormone is indiscriminate with respect to which tissues it grows. So if you happen to have an existing tumor on a given body part or within a given body part, it will encourage growth of that tumor as well. That's one of the reasons some people are cautious about taking growth hormone. Okay, that is absolutely positively not true. Now, I have actually done podcasts with doctors who are far more advanced in their knowledge of uh, growth hormone than Dr. Huberman is. And they've all said in their patients to a man that, the dose, the difference between a pill and a poison is always the dosage and a surgically precise dosage of human growth hormone is not going to exacerbate tumor formation in the majority of humans. Now, again, growth hormone has been studied in humans for a long time. It's obviously been studied in children, as you know, who have dwarfism and growth problem or growth plate issues. And they've used massively high dosages in these children and they do not get tumors or cancers or any of this stuff. So again, this is fear porn again, bro. This well, is, I would this is fear, fear to come to fear. come with a little science. And uh, I'm not a scientist by any means. If we were to look at that and say, like, okay, let's give credence to like growth hormone may increase tumor formation. There is zero yes. lack of acknowledging the insulin pathway in relation right. to right. the growth hormone. What do we know also causes cancer to grow? glucose high what levels is, of insulin yes exactly and we know that there is a connection between growth hormone and insulin so can you say growth hormone causes cancer or is it growth hormone in the presence of rampant runaway insulin signaling that which is the average have? american dumpster fire human who literally exactly. has overwhelmed <laughs> blood sugar and insulin because they do not live insulin controlled right dude and I'm glad also you there's said there's this too because this is like a question I have. Again, I don't have all the answers, but I have a question. I think the right questions will lead us to the right answers. Why do all people that usually get cancer after the age of 50 look at their growth hormone and IGF right. levels? Because after the age yeah. of 50, your levels fall off a cliff. So if growth hormone is so prevalent and likely to cause cancer, why do all the people that cause cancer or have cancer usually have very low levels of growth hormone and very low levels of IGF-1? I don't know, but let's talk about that as it relates to science instead of just saying growth hormone causes tumor well, formation. Let's, let's hit you play know. right now so he can put his foot in his mouth. Hold on. Another reason why many people are cautious about taking growth hormone is that it is subject to what's called negative feedback. If your <laughs> blood levels of growth hormone are too high by virtue of injecting growth hormone, well, then the pituitary can register that and the brain can register that. And then there's a negative feedback that shuts down growth hormone. As a consequence, people- okay. So Hunter, you and I have put this to bed. I mean, again, he's he's just regurgitating the quote unquote ex accepted science about how growth hormone or, or taking exogenous human growth hormone shuts down the body's pituitary, which is obviously where uh, growth hormone is produced in the human body. It shuts down the endogenous production and it leads to blah, 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 all these issues and, 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 and problems. Whereas you and I now have been using human growth hormone for f close to all oh, shit, dude, close to three and a half years. Uh, and I used it before that when it wasn't pharma grade, it was the bro kind of like Chinese bodybuilding way back in the day. And I didn't use it for a long time. I used it for a short amount of time, but it was real, even though it's low grade, low quality compared to pharma. And we have found that in cycling growth hormone and using it intermittently and taking tests of IGF-1 and obviously other biomarkers, it does not, I will repeat, it does not shut down the body's endogenous production of human growth hormone relative to the dosage and the response. And again, you go, you know, talking about insulin, if you're living insulin controlled, you're using metformin, you're using dihydroberberin, you're again, you're regulating your carbohydrate intake, you're fasting, you're increasing autophagy, hormesis, all these other things. You are not going to shut down your pituitary's production of growth hormone, but which, which is important in what you already said, relative to your age, you might not have that much anyway, right? Especially Hunter, and nobody's talking about this, living in the contaminated world and environments that we are all living in, especially people living in first world industrialized societies like the US, like the EU, Canada, 
other westernized places where everything is you know contaminated in your environment so it's like he's just again he's he's just regurgitating what the consensus is in the allopathic medical community about using growth hormone. As I've said before, a very famous surgeon once said to me in 2014 that if growth hormone and metformin were in the water supply, there would be very few hospitals. And that is absolutely true. So, I mean, again, fear, fear, fear. Dude, it's going to well, shut down your natural production. If you use it, you're going to be screwed because then your body won't make anymore. I mean, it's the same old shit. Well, so here's, here's the question too. Can we ask what, what growth hormone production, because if we're shutting it right. off, what are we shutting off? Cause if it's right. over, he's going to mention in this podcast over the age of 30, you basically he'll even, he, he admits this, like your growth hormone production plummets off of a cliff. So if we're worried about pervert, preserving something that's barely there, what's the point of preserving it? Oh, wait, because we don't want people to use growth hormone because it's very safe. It's very efficacious at a surgically precise dose to help people lose fat, build muscle, stay young and like optimize immune function and all the amazing things that growth hormone does. So again, it just goes back. Did, the question I have for you, dude, do you think that's actually more of a bro science myth than it is scientifically proven that it shuts down pituitary function. So, so what I understand about growth hormone goes back to the life extension foundation, right? They don't have a lot of science that they publish, but they do have science amongst users and they do track people that are using it. And I will definitely tell you that the majority of life extension foundation people that took growth hormone back in the seventies and eighties. And then it was, you know, Dr. Jeffrey life. And he was all over the newspapers in the nineties, you know, showing that 70 year old guy who was using growth hormone, had a six pack and you could live, you know, forever too with using human growth hormone. Those people were wealthy people for the most part. And they did not live insulin controlled. We did, they did not understand we, they or we, or the scientific community did not understand insulin control and living with you know better glucose management and they weren't using metformin for the most part so most of these people bro were using growth hormone as a panacea the dosages were probably all over the board too some of these people were probably using four or five ius a day and again if you're not living insulin controlled you're not using metformin or dihydroberberin or other glucose suppressors uh you're going to get diabetes you're going to get you know, they call it gestational diabetes from using growth hormone. I've seen that too, where like you'd see like older people who've been using growth hormone for 30 years, again, wealthy back in the eighties and nineties. And they have like a layer of visceral body fat right around their belly. And it was kind of weird. It was squishy. And again, this is from the insulin resistance that they were building up to the injecting of the growth hormone, but you're not going to have that problem if you're living insulin controlled and you're doing all the things that obviously we recommend, you know, in the God stack and all of our courses and our books and all of our writings and all the stuff inside of our, our course, our private membership group. So at the end of the day, it's a good question. But again, we have now seen that if you use a dosage of growth hormone, that's anywhere from like one to two to one and a half IUs of growth hormone, and you use it, you know, Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday, take a couple days off a week, depending on your age, you're not going to shut your body's natural production of growth hormone down again, relative to your age, and whether or not your body is even producing IGF. But there's absolutely no scientific proof or evidence anywhere. There are clearly no studies in which he probably mentions in this, you know, in adult age humans that are looking for optimization, but Hunter, they do have massive amounts of research in kids that were suffering from dwarfism and the side effects that are very known and announced are acromalgy, right? And acromalgy is, a, is the oversize or the over increase of the skeletal structure. You know, usually it appears in the face or it can appear in the forehead. And again, that's because these kids, bro, are taking like 25 IUs a day before their growth plates have uh, closed because they're dwarfs or they're, they, they expect them to be dwarfs and they want them to be, to reach natural size in adulthood as a male or female. So I don't think anyone knows. I think it's speculative to your original question. I think that the bros would say that because they were using massive dosages. We all know that in the bro world, more is better when it comes to anabolic steroids and combining it with growth hormone and insulin and all those other things. So it's like, it's most likely comes from a place where people were overusing it, taking too high of again, called super physiologic levels or dosages. And that's where all of this came from. But again, you and I, and obviously thousands of other people that we work with have taken IGF one tests both on and off. And there is never a disturbance in IGF when you keep your dosage within a relatively call it surgically precise 
uh, dosage range. It just, it doesn't happen, bro. Science does not prove what people experience in real life. Interestingly enough, related to those kids that you would use like, you know, one whole pen of growth hormone every two days or whatever, incidence of cancer among those kids, when you, you know, pound for pound with kids that are not actually was less than kids that exactly. do not use growth hormones. That's so, what I'm saying. Or, 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 I'm not saying so it's good no or bad point. for it, but there's no, exactly. We can't correlate or like, but know, what like we do know, but hormone. what we do know is that the, the, the medical establishment does not want people using human growth hormones. Because again, then they would eliminate a large section of their petroleum distillate, big pharma, call them whatever, Rockefeller pharmaceutical, you know, medications that do cause side effects and do cause uh, issues from other drugs and other drugs. And I mean, again, it's just, it never ends. But, you know, again, I go back to what I was told. If metformin and growth hormone were in the United States water supply, there would be very few hospitals. So we know that it does a lot of really good things and it outweighs, again, when used responsibly in surgically precise dosages, all of the quote unquote high risky bad things that he's talking about on this podcast, which again, he's just repeating from the literature, bro, from the scientific inquiry slash evidence that has been out there for a long time which doesn't equate to people who are actually using it day to day. If this information is valuable to you guys, you know, you're not a Jay Campbell or Hunter Williams fan or audience member. And somehow this video got to you and you did find a lot of value in this video, which if you're half awake, you should join us in our private membership group, fully optimized health.com. You can see here on the, it's a link in the bottom and it'll also be linked in the description, but every single week Hunter and I do live shows on Tuesday night answering your questions, talking about deeper consciousness, enhancing things and spirituality and all sorts of stuff. We also do all sorts of like free, not free, but if you're a member of the group, it's free to you, uh, live webinars. And of course, everything is recorded. We've got over 400 people. Now we just crossed the 400 uh, person barrier inside the group, men and women. It's not just for guys. It's for men and women who are biohacking their best life. So again, if this is valuable to you, please join us in our group. It's $99 a month or actually only two forty nine dollars a quarter. It is easily worth that money in, in cost. Yeah, man. <laughs> awesome, dude. So I mean, again, I'm Jay Campbell. He's Hunter Williams. We appreciate you guys watching. We will see you guys very soon.